The riots that broke out in Jerusalem in the year 66 CE began when the Jews couldn't take Roman curator Gessius Floris' provocations anymore. After torturing them, killing them, and plundering their money, he sends his soldiers to rob the Jews' holiest site, the temple. Enraged, the people of Jerusalem take to the streets to stop the Romans with their own bodies. Using sticks and makeshift swords, they block the Romans' way and repel them. All Jerusalem is pandemonium. Take Eleazar ben Hananiah, a young priest who has held a high position in the temple and is sick of being degraded. And he isn't the only one. Around him gather the zealots, a daring group willing to do anything to put an end to the oppression. Eleazar bravely abolishes the most humiliating symbol of oppression, the sacrifice for the emperor's welfare. The official reason given is that, according to Torah law, an offering may not be taken from a Gentile, and Nero is a Gentile par excellence. But everyone knows this is just an excuse. Abolishing the offering is a call for an uprising. And soon, war will break out. The leaders, priests, and elders fear the deterioration of relations with Rome. We must offer the sacrifice again before we anger the Romans and spark a fire that will consume us all. An argument breaks out among the people. Some say the sacrifice must be offered. Some oppose it vehemently. But the zealots hadn't come to listen to arguments. Convinced of the righteousness, they incite the crowd against the leaders and speak out against them. A civilized debate? You must be joking. Within minutes, the public gathering turns into a threatening mob. Josephus, the historian, himself a high-ranking priest, happened to be in the temple at that very moment. We were all struck with terror. I began to fear that since I took such a strong stance against rebelling, they'd suspect me too of siding with the enemy and kill me. I hurried away, deep into the temple. It seems the Jewish people are on a collision course with the most powerful empire in the world. But wait, the story isn't over yet. At this very moment, the influential sages are holding an emergency meeting. The sages understand the situation very well. They come to an agreement. Fighting the Romans is too dangerous. If we wish to maintain peace with the Romans, we must sacrifice the offering for the emperor's welfare. All Jerusalem heaves a sigh of relief. Then, just before the meeting is adjourned, a twist in the plot. At the far end of the room, a sage Rabbi Zechariah ben Avkulos stands up. He rejects the other sages' arguments and adamantly forbids the sacrificial offering. The zealots cheer. They don't care that Rabbi Zechariah holds only the minority view. They cling to his radical statement and incite the entire nation to war. The humility of Rabbi Zechariah ben Avkulas destroyed our home, burned our temple, and exiled us from our land. Sometimes words can kill. Rabbi Zechariah's statements and the zealots' inflaming cries were just words. But those words ignited the fire of war that burned down the temple, led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands, and sent an entire nation into exile. In the debate over the emperor's offering, Eleazar ben Hananiah and his comrades, the zealots, won. But the victory was achieved through force and violence against their own people. And it was to haunt them like a curse. From now on, all disputes would be resolved the same way, with shouting and threats. And that's called civil war. And in that kind of war, there are no winners. In clashes among Jews, thousands are killed. Entire sections of the city are destroyed. And the stores of food that could have saved the besieged city 
would go up in flames. The madness reaches its peak when Vespasian arrives with a huge army to conquer Jerusalem and is shocked to find that the Jews are busy slaughtering each other. Better that we sit comfortably and watch from afar as our enemies kill each other themselves and fight one another like madmen. It's easy to be wise in hindsight, but it's hard to know if war, destruction, and exile of the Jewish people could have been prevented, would open, honest debate, without anger and harsh words, have had different results? A totally different history? Sometimes I wonder what would happen if that kind of debate took place here in Israel today. Would we also be drawn into a maelstrom of hatred Violence, belligerence, and civil war, in which each side sees only its own truth and forgets everything else? Or is that deep scar left by that horrific war so long ago enough to keep us from repeating their mistake? What do you think? <laughs>